Hi there and welcome to this video. In this video, let's see how much it costs to run Kubernetes on the Valtra Kubernetes engine. Valtra has a managed Kubernetes service that you can use if you don't want to go through the hassle of managing Kubernetes on your own. Let's see how much it costs to run Kubernetes on the Valtra Kubernetes engine. If you want to test the Valtra Kubernetes engine, I have $300 free credit link in the description. You can test Valtra Kubernetes engine with $300 free credit. The link is in the description. So you can deploy your Kubernetes cluster right there if you click on add Kubernetes or you can go here under Kubernetes and this is where you're going to find all your clusters. So I'll click there on Kubernetes and you can add a cluster and or if you're sure you just want a cluster with GPUs, you can go with that, the A100 NVIDIA GPU. So if you click that, you're going to get that option, but you can also get that option from here. And we're also going to see that when we get to choosing the nodes. So let me click there on add cluster. So the first thing about cost that I'm going to let you know is that the control plane is free. And you may think that is not a big deal, but running a control plane, you're definitely going to require a virtual machine for that. So that is a free virtual machine that you're not going to have to pay for. So the control plane is free. So first, give your cluster a name. So we are going to delve into the other costs as we go along. So the first one, of course, control plane is free. So I'll just give my cluster a name of sample. The next thing, you can enable high availability. If you enable high availability, I think it's going to add $20 to your monthly billings. Yeah, so take a look at that. We are going to change the servers for now. This is the default that they've chosen. So if you enable high availability, take a note of that, you'll see that it will increase with $20 and that's probably because it's going to use the load balancer. So enable high availability if you're okay with the $20 plus. And then firewall, this one is free, of course, enable firewall. And this can give you a nice place where you can edit the firewall rules for your cluster. If you need to add a port, remove a port, choose a cluster location. So of course your cluster can only be in one location. If you want multiple clusters, you have to create a different cluster with a different location. So here I can just go with London. The next cost is your nodes. So we've already established that the control plane is free. So what you have to pay for next is the nodes. These are the virtual machines that are part of your worker nodes. So here you'll have to give it a name. You have to choose the number of nodes. That is the number of machines that will be in this node pool. You have to choose. So the pricing will change based on the type of the type of virtual machines that you choose there. So first of all, you can see here node pool. So you can have different node pools. You can create another node pool. So the node pool is just a group of nodes that have the same specifications so for instance you have different applications you want to run on your cluster some may require a gpu some may require a lot of memory others will will work with whatever is there so in that case you can create multiple node pools maybe one node pool will have virtual machines with high cpu optimized cloud for better memory other machines will just use the normal vps so that brings me to these different types of machines which are here Cloud GPU, of course, that is a virtual machine with a GPU. And then optimized cloud. These are, uh, these are VDSs, virtual dedicated machines. The CPU is not shared. All these others, they have shared CPU. So these are all shared. These are the regular ones most used on most virtual machines. So if you need a VPS, that's probably one of the products you'd go with. You can also give them names based on the machines that you go with here. So maybe I can call it Node Path. That's for Node Performance because I'm going to choose I'm going to choose the high performance virtual machines. So I'll give it that name, and at least I will know that that is under that is using the high performance virtual machines. Add the number of nodes. So of course, for your Kubernetes cluster, you should have a minimum of two nodes, two worker nodes. So I'm going to leave it at that with two nodes and I will choose high performance down there. And with the high performance as well, you can choose the size of the virtual machine. 
So here you can see this is two CPU and two GB of RAM, 60 GB bandwidth of 4 TB. So I'm just going to select that. Or you can go with one which has more memory and two CPU. So it's entirely up to you. For $24, you can go with one with four CPUs. And let's say maybe you have something you want to try with some machine learning. So you're going to need a GPU for that. So let's add another node pool. And for this node pool, we can call this node GPU. They're all going to be virtual machines on your cluster. So it will be up to you to decide. It will be up to you to know how you can distribute your workloads on these virtual machines, on these nodes. Of course, for this, we need a GPU. So I'm going to select a node pool type of GPU, cloud GPU. Let's say here we also want two nodes, but you can have as many as you want. So you see, to calculate your price, you multiply that by the number of nodes and Valtra will tell you how much it costs. If you want multiple nodes, just do that. Valtra is going to calculate it for you and give you the total price down here. So there are no hidden charges. Everything will be shown to you there. So let's come back down to the GPU. For the GPU as well, you can choose the type of GPU that you want. You can go with one NVIDIA A100 or NVIDIA A16. Of course, do your research to find which one will work well for you. And also the GPU is sliced, right? So this is a virtual machine. That GPU is sliced just as CPU and RAM is virtualized. Select the GPU you want to go with there. Maybe you need a quarter, a slice of a quarter GPU. And the price will be shown to you there. That is your monthly price. So your total nodes will be two plus that. So those are three nodes. Uh, maybe you want to add another one. Let's just look at the price of uh, the regular compute. So add another node pool. I'll just call this regular. And I can add two virtual machines because these are cheap. So I can choose their node pool type of regular cloud compute. And this for one virtual CPU to GB RAM is ten dollars so if you want that you can select that two of them will be twenty dollars per month and your total price will be that so let's say that's all you need for your cluster you can click there on deploy now so for some reason i've been told that they are sold out but i think if i was to choose different nodes uh, i probably want to get that issue let me try once again with a different node type i'll just go with sample high availability enable the firewall london high performance and for that as well you can choose amd high performance i will go with amd high performance just one node cluster and I will deploy now. All right, so you can see now it's deploying. The earlier issue was, I don't know, I think the GPU ones were out of stock. I don't know that it was regular, uh, regular compute that was out of stock. So that's the first cost. The first cost are the nodes. If you add high availability, add $20 on that. The number of nodes, you'll be shown how much that costs. And then other costs that you're definitely going to incur are storage, so for storage, you're going to use cloud. Uh, you're going to use the block storage. So let's look at cloud storage to see what you can expect. So of course, you'll mostly use the block storage. Add block storage. Let's see how much this can cost you for your Kubernetes cluster because you're going to need to have storage for your Kubernetes. Block storage, HDD. Of course, you want to go with NVMe. This is cheaper. If you're doing backups, then you can go with that. But if you want to actually run your workloads and get the best speeds for stateful applications, just go with NVMe. So you can see $1, 10 GB. This one is $1, 40 GB. Let's stick with that. Our cluster was in London. So make sure you choose the same, same region, the same, same location. But this probably you won't have to do this manually.
So this is just to show you how much it would cost you. I will stick with London and then I can choose the amount of storage I need. Maybe I need 700 GB. That's going to be $70 per month. Maybe I only need 100 GB. That's going to be $10 per month. So add that to your cluster. So I'm not going to deploy that, but that's just another cost. So calculate how much storage you're going to need. Uh, add that to the monthly cost of your Kubernetes for all your clusters. Something else that you might incur would be load balancing. If I come here under load balancers, this is a standard price. So you can add a load balancer. Of course, this as well, you can provision via Kubernetes. Let's see how much this is going to cost. This is where the pricing comes in. For one node, you're going to get $10. You're going to pay $10 per month. If you want a load balancer with multiple nodes, let's say you want three nodes. So it, has a, it is either one or three nodes, and that is because of uh, the algorithm there. So for three nodes, it's going to be $20 per month. If you need more, five. You can see it's going like this because it needs a quorum. Uh, for making decisions so it can't make decisions when they're at even so there needs to be a quorum for decisions to be made so you can just start with one if it is overwhelmed you can go with two and see if performance will improve but just start with one so what else could you be paying for maybe you can there are certain things maybe you might need to use object storage let's see how much Object storage costs, add object storage. So object storage is $6 per month for one, one TB, 1000 GB of storage and one TB of bandwidth. And then additional 0 0.6 GB. All right. So if you need object storage, kind of like S3, you can go with this. You can see this is way, way more affordable than using Amazon's S3. Right, so that's the major cost of running your Kubernetes on Valtra. So just to summarize, you're going to pay for your nodes and the number of nodes, the type of nodes that you choose will affect your monthly cost for the actual nodes on your cluster. And then again, storage, you're going to need to pay for storage. So that depends if you're going to use, if you're going to run your applications using the block storage, then the amount of storage you choose that will affect your final monthly pricing and then if you're going to use the load balancer then that is also going to affect your monthly pricing and something else that i've just realized i forgot is if if you want a separation of concern between your cluster database you can use managed database service so if i was to click there on databases you can get to deploy managed databases as well if you want to use this go with optimize cloud let's choose cloud compute high performance it is 60 per month now the pricing has really really increased i don't know this price is, seems to have been raised recently and this one as well the pricing can increase based on the number of replica nodes so replica nodes is sort of like high availability for your database that's another price you can add, but you don't have to do this. You can just run your Kubernetes database. You can run your workloads database, which whichever way is best for you. You can run them as containers or you can deploy your own virtual machine, which would actually be much cheaper than this. Deploy your virtual machine and then install whether it's Postgres, install it, secure your server. And if you're going to do that, just make sure that this is in the same is in the same VPC as your Kubernetes and you make it only accessible via the private IP of your database if you're going to do it manually, which is what I would do considering these prices have been raised massively. All right, so that should cover it. Just giving you an idea of how much it would cost to run your Kubernetes on Valtra. So that's it for this video. How much would it cost to run your Kubernetes cluster on Valtra Kubernetes Engine? 
that's it for this one. If you have any questions, let me know. If there's something that I may have missed or I may have overlooked, just let me know and I will see what to do. If you want to test the Valtra Kubernetes engine, I have $300 free credit link in the description. You can you can test Valtra Kubernetes engine with $300 free credit. The link is in the description.